Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz trombonist Nick Finzer. Always busy, his newest 2017 album, Here and Now, comes to the public at a moment of deep uncertainty and divisiveness in this country and around the world. The album's nine tracks includes eight originals along with a Duke Ellington classic. From a large range of variable reactions, this album swishes from the intense energy of protest to a more meditative mood. We have talked to Nick over the years, and he talks to us again about this important project. So please dig this interview, my friends. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes out to talk with me today. I appreciate it. Oh, sure. Yes, my pleasure. I was very excited to see another album come through. The, the beauty of doing this show is that we have built up enough of a rapport that I get the chance to get follow-up CDs, and every single time it just gets better with you. I and I love the fact that this is a politically charged album here and now is. So what I want to know, just kind of give me an overview of what's been going on with you lately. You know, trying to keep keep busy in New York, uh, just playing with, uh, you know, different bands. I started playing with uh, Anat Cohen and her Tentet. We played last summer at the Newport Jazz Festival, which was uh, the first time for me playing there. So that was great. Playing still a little bit with uh, Ryan Truesdale's Gil, Gil Evans Project. Uh, some gigs around and uh, doing a lot of stuff with with my group uh, around the city and working on working on this new music and um, just been just been writing a lot of music and, and trying and also getting a bunch of educational materials uh, together uh, for my nonprofit. We launched like a beginning improvisation online course a couple months ago, so we made a made a bunch of uh, stuff for that. And uh, so yeah, just you know trying to keep my hands. Dirty and a lot of different uh, things to keep keep busy. So we are getting ready to enter in as of January 20th into a new political realm that is stirring up a lot of emotions in this country. And as your PR release said, this album is a politically charged album. So what I want to know from you, what I like from the message on this album is that the first song is "We the People" and the ninth and final song is "Love Wins." That probably has to be some kind of a hopeful message i would assume yeah yeah i think that for, for me like no matter what the you know what what goes on you know i have to think that the you know it's better better times ahead and that the you know all of us together were more powerful than than separate and fighting and arguing and so that i think you're right there's a trying to have an undertone of a positive message even though it can be kind of turbulent we'll, we'll get through it you know um for yeah for me it's like just kind of the power of of people and the power of thinking positively and and of people coming together to make you know things happen you know i remember years ago there was a cartoon in the paper depicting the George Steinbrenner, Billy Martin kind of love and hate affair. And it was a carousel and it was Steinbrenner waiting outside and, and Billy Martin was hopping back on it. I kind of think that way about politics, you know, there's the elephant, and the donkey, and they're always standing there. One of them gets on, one of them gets off. History is definitely a carousel and it's just a part of the democratic process, I think. Right. Yeah. Everything's going to have, you know, action and reaction. It's going to swing one way and then back the other. You know, there's been a lot of good things, a lot of good things that have happened, I think, in my opinion. And, you know, now it's time for, you know, some other things are going to happen, but, you know, there's going to be someone that comes after and, and uh, you know, better better things ahead, I think. Yeah, without a doubt. So the one thing I do want to ask about, take me into the studio. I'm always eternally fascinated in a good way as to how quick these jazz albums get put together, how masterful you cast are at improv, and how you just go in, you have a focus, you have a goal, and you make these albums. Take me into the studio, talk to me about how you construct it here and now. Basically, uh, for me, I work best when I have uh, a deadline. So about, let's see, last January, about a year ago, last January, I decided that I needed to get back in the studio, so I just had to put down the money and pay for the studio and get put myself on the hook to make sure that I actually did what I said I was going to do. Uh, so uh, in, in, the, in the months after that, I wrote kind of a little bunch of music and kind of you know got it together. 
in that way. But on the day of the studio uh, session, I was working with Ryan Truesdell, uh, who also produced, uh, he was producing the record for me, and he also produces records for like Maria Schneider and, and some other people. We got together a bunch of times and kind of worked out some of the arrangements, but um, that kind of really helped me kind of focus in on, on trying to be efficient and effective on that day because uh, we did it just in one day. But, you know, I'm a pretty organized person and kind of like made like a schedule and kind of like, okay, from this time we're going to do this tune. And, and and for me, well, it's usually the first take. Like the energy is usually the best on the first take. Sometimes things are maybe a little cleaner or a little more um, precise on, on later takes, but it's always, usually the energy of the band is the best. So for me, I don't want to like waste the band's time by like playing three four five times on a tune unless we really need to in the post-production process like it's way easier if you have just a few takes to choose from so you're not like going back and forth like oh is this one better or this one better but uh so on on the record we have lucas pino on tenor sax and bass clarinet and we have glenn zalewski on the piano alex wins on the guitar dave Barron on the bass and jimmy mcbride on the drums and these guys have all recorded with me before so they know they kind of know how I work and, and they know how my music is and kind of what to focus on and what types of things, you know, I'll be looking for in order to feel good about the take. And um, so, they, you know, these guys, they, they play a lot together and, and we have a pretty good history. And so everything went really smoothly and, and we got it all done in just, just that one day. So you're going to start going out and really promoting this on February 7th. You're going to be at the Eastman School and that will all culminate on your schedule of events with a March 22nd official CD release show at Smalls. Talk to me about how excited you are. It looks like you're going to go from New York to Ohio, Michigan, Oklahoma, Arizona, even St. Louis, Illinois, Tennessee, Florida. How's that going to be? What are, you, are you looking forward to that swing through these states? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited. This is the most ambitious uh, tour I've put together for myself. Um, of kind of culminating a lot of different parts of my life, different uh, people that I know, different musicians that I like to play with all over the country. Yeah, but I'm super excited to be able to, to share the music, and it's, it's always really exciting to like get the music in front of new people. And uh, a lot of times, you know, it's people in, in our industry, you know, kind of lament the fact that it's difficult to tour. And uh, But I feel like, you know, there's so much uh, that happens when you go out and get the music in front of people, and they can hear it live. Uh, I feel like, you know, recordings are great, videos are great online, but when you get people in a room and you get to play for them and they experience the music, like that's the part of jazz that you know, I fell in love with and, and I think a lot of people enjoy, but sometimes in our 21st century busy lives, we forget that actually it is really a different experience to hear that music live. So you know, I'm just, I want to get out there and try to get the music in front of people, you know, to to, sh to share, you know, what I think and try to bring some, you know, positivity even though, to, to the situation, even though some of these tunes kind of, you know, reference maybe a little bit of the darker side of some things. But I think uh, ultimately, like we were talking about, you know, getting a positive message out there and ho hope people um, will enjoy the music. But I think it's really important to get out there and bring the music to the people because especially in jazz, you know, the people aren't necessarily, you know, seeking us out. So, I, I want to get out and uh, try to get the music to people. And this is a great album to get out to the people. I'm glad that I've got to experience it. I'm looking forward to spinning it on the show. So, Nick, thank you for taking a little time out there from your uh, trip in L.A. to talk to me and Neon Jazz about it. Good luck with the release, and I, I look forward to many more that come from you our way. Oh, well, thanks, Joey. It's my pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for being interested and for sharing the music. It means a lot. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Nick for all the music and his cool. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store, or visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the home of Neon Jazz at neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the music, my friends. Neon Jazz.